Hello subscribers, friends, and everyone else, and all the creatives. I just got back from the art store, just took a shower, and I bought some new art supplies. So, when I was there, I was thinking of the things that I needed. I looked around, and they had a huge sale on everything. And then they had stuff that was on clearance, and things that were also reduced on top of that. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. And I have here... This big bag with all of the art supplies in it. I'm gonna take a look here. Now, the first thing that I've got would be these here. These are the watercolor brush pens, and you can use them for watercolor, uh, painting, blending, coloring. I um, mean, you can put ink in these as well, and it's got a flat tip, it also has a medium tip and a fine tip as you can see here. I know I haven't done a whole lot of watercolor painting on this channel yet, but I do plan on doing a lot more of it and that's why I got these because I like to use these when I'm doing watercolor painting because I like to do little tiny details and most of the paintings I do are smaller. They're about no larger than 11 by 14. Very rarely do I even go to that size, but most of my paintings are eight by 10 or nine by 12. And so I, that's one reason I got these. Also because when I'm using these, I, it has a little reservoir inside of it, as you can see here. And that allows you to fill it with water. And then after you fill it with water, you could put watercolor inside of it, mix it, have a, a color already set. Or you could just take this and dip it into the paint. So then you don't have to worry about having a brush to uh, dip the paint into and have to worry about re-wetting re it all the time. So when you have this, you can just dip it into a little cup and then you're good to go. It's really convenient and these are good to take with you, say if you're going somewhere to do a, a painting um, and you're out and about and you don't really have room for a lot of supplies or to carry a lot with you. You can have a little sketchbook and uh, one of these and your paints and you're good to go to start painting and the next art supply that I have here that I got on sale was the Fabriano sketchbook now this one is a, a sketchbook that has dotted lines in it and all the sketchbooks I have they have um, they're just plain paper and they don't have any dots in them or lines or anything else but all the ones that I was going to get that were plain paper they were not on sale they weren't on clearance or anything and they wanted ten dollars for each of these uh, I've only got one sketchbook that is plain as a Fabiano and this one here is a dotted and the reason I got it was because it was only a dollar dollar forty nine and I can still do drawings in it and whatnot even those dots maybe I can like connect the dots and draw a different type of drawing than what I've done before but it's got quite a few pages of paper in it and the paper weight I believe is if I can find it on here yeah the paper weight is an 85 GM there's 90 sheets of paper in this so and it's an a5 size made in Italy and Those sketchbooks I've used that is similar to this um, Well, it's actually the same paper. It's just that it's a plain paper and um, a little bit smaller than the sketchbook the next one that I have here is Similar, but this one is wire bound as you can see here rather than having dots this one has the squares in the sketchbook so it would be good for uh, doing writing or calligraphy. And another reason I got this sketchbook was so that if I'm doing drawings and I want to make something look three-dimensional or um, if I'm drawing a portrait, this will help me have the grid lines already set up. So all I have to do is go into the drawing and um, whatever my reference photo is, match those lines up and I can get a, get a lot of practice in doing it. But I'll have to see what it's like using fountain pen ink on this and the roaching isographs. I'm not sure about using graphite in it. I mean, although I think it'll work perfectly fine, it's just that it has a really smooth 
tooth to the paper and so it won't pick up the graphite as well as the other sketchbooks that have a bit of a rougher surface to it but the other one was gray this one is a red sketchbook and this one was also a dollar 49 it's regularly six six dollars for this and the next one that i have here which is the last art supply that i picked up which was on sale and i got it for a really good price which would be these inks right here and this is the amsterdam all acrylics and it is regularly 43.95 and it was on clearance for 29.99 and then they had it reduced for 11.99 so i got it for a really cheap price but this you can use it with um, brush a dip pen technical pen and an airbrush i think if i use it in a technical pen I'm definitely not going to put it in my Ritching Isographs. I'm going to use something that's really cheap. Maybe there was really cheap um, technical pens that I had. The ones that were like the Ritching Isographs, I'm trying to remember the name of them. But those were super cheap. They were like $5 for a pen plus ink. But I'll try it in maybe in one of those. And I'll try it with my watercolor brush pens. I'm not sure why I couldn't get this dip pen to work. But the ink would not flow out of the tip of it very well for some reason. And I tried even sanding the tip of it some, making it pointier or duller. And neither of them worked. But we'll give this a try again and see how it works. These acrylic inks come in several different colors. The colors that it has would be the red ink. Which for some reason, I'm not sure, um, maybe that's why it was reduced so cheaply. But the ink, uh, the red one, was looks like some of the ink was coming out. And we also have the yellow ink. And then we also have the white ink. And then we have, after that, the blue ink. And then we have a green and a black ink. Now, we'll go back to the colors again real quick. This one is a primary magenta, which will be the red. The yellow is a primary yellow. The white is a titanium white. And this one will, it looks, like, looks kind of like a purple, but it says primary sand. And then this one is an emerald green. And this one is an oxide black. Now all of these inks, because um, you get you get your primary colors, the red, the yellow, and the blue. Then you get a black and a white. These also come with a little, what looks like, yeah, it's like an eyedropper kind of. Yeah. Well, somewhat of an eyedropper. I don't think so. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, this comes with a, if I can do it without spilling the ink anywhere. This here is the eyedropper that is for these acrylics. And it's a bit of a bend to the tip of it. I'm not sure if it's intended to be that way or if that has something to do with mixing it. Or maybe that's just how it was made on an accident. But this is what that looks like. And this is the red, which was the um, one that was looked like it was leaking a little bit and maybe that's why they had reduced it. These acrylic inks are one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters so it's a pretty good amount of ink for the price that I got all of this for being that they're normally $40 and I bought these at Hobby Lobby and usually Hobby Lobby costs more than Michael's and Michael's usually has a wider selection it kind of just depends on your area but when I shopped at Michael's the prices for things were a little bit cheaper, but Hobby Lobby's all I've got around here, but I got this for so cheap that, and the fact that I needed them, I went ahead and picked them up because can't go wrong for $10 for all this ink.
So these are all of my R supplies that I bought all together here. And the total cost for all this was only $20. And I saved over $60 buying these inks, the watercolor brushes, and the two sketchbooks for drawing, calligraphy, writing, or anything else. And I saved quite a bit of money. I got the things that I needed. And I'm going to be doing some drawings in these and with these inks and with these water brushes. And I look forward to showing you all what that looks like. So go ahead and let me know in the comments below what you would like me to draw or paint with these. And any other suggestions about things to paint or things to draw. And if you have any questions about anything else, just go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around. Stay creative.